Hey guys, Fuse Box back on Rage Shadow Legends, and uh, I've been sick all week, so I apologize. I feel about like I look, but I, it is giving me more time to get ready for the Sylvan Watchers uh, Faction Wars. So these epics are pretty much perfect heroes to get through Faction Wars. You've got heals, protection, uh, very unique protection. You've got the self-healing, the poisons to bring on a boss to slowly kill waves. You've got big damage, decreased defense, AOE right here. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And if I'm lucky enough to pull a Ruella, I pretty much will have everything I need to beat Faction Wars. But we're going to jump into Mist Rider. Dude is awesome. I, I, I know that I'm down right now, not feeling great, but I can't stress how awesome he is. Now, here's the thing. Do you want to build him? Yes. If you want a decreased defense down on your and an AOE skill for the Sylvan Faction, that's all you got. He's all you got. This A2 is all you need to see. Pretty much when you go into Faction Wars, you need good support, trying to stay alive to get the three stars, and then you need damage, you need decreased defense. This dude can do all of that. And then you just need some control. Now, if you want, this guy would do just fine in a stun set, almost any set, because of the way his, sk his skills kind of barrel into each other so we're going to talk about how this guy can go fully automatic just on the on the flip of a switch it's really fun to watch basically he's got an a3 that buffs his accuracy it buffs his attack this means he's easier to build so let's jump into mine and check him out. so because of all the extra abilities and extra turns we are going to be running a relentless set but he uses this a3 to buff his accuracy buff his attack make him even stronger and then he gets an extra turn going into his a2 this hits everybody, decreases defense. As long as it lands all those, he gets another extra turn. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then he has an A1 that has a 20% chance natively to get another extra turn. If this happens, you are back to using your A3, back into the A2, back into the A1. And I have seen this guy like nonstop go. So how am I going to be build, building him, running him? Uh, we will talk about his build because, again, you can put a stun set on him. And he would do just great. Uh, you could put a toxic set and he would be spreading poisons everywhere with all his extra turns. You could put on the savage gear and get a lot more damage. This guy does hit hard. But what's really impressive is the amount of hits he gets. And they're all strong attacks, right? They're all like in the top 75% of the game. But he's getting so many hits that you, you can't just look at how much damage, even though it is a good hit, each damage, each hit does. They just pile up. Uh, but we're going to do the Relentless. This gives us the cushion. If we get a 3% miss on landing decreased defense, he still has a chance for an extra turn. If the 20% doesn't proc, the Relentless may proc, and it gives us more chances to comfortably get extra turns and keep him going. And, of course, it's never going to be perfect, but he can do some amazing things. So uh, that, that's it. That's his kit. He does have a good accuracy aura in all battles. And, again, how are we running him? Like, I'm leaving his banner unrolled up for the moment because just to show I've been doing all this at 200 accuracy because he's going to get another 100 when he increases his accuracy. He's going to gain more attack, uh, but he's in a solid build, like just a normal solid build, 4,500 attack, 260 crit damage, just a real run of the run of the mill kind of build. He's really slow right now because I really just am not, it will prevent me from going into some of the higher end stuff today but I just want to see this build work. And the speed, even though you do want a debuffer typically to be one of the fastest on the team, he takes so many turns, it doesn't matter. And that's kind of what we want to show off. I'm using Helm Smasher. Pretty pretty normal stuff. Arcane Celerity, uh, Ma Master Hexer, and, and Helm Smasher is pretty much all that I'm worried about. Uh, two or three builds that I was playing with, they were over 100 crit rate. So always take the attack. If you have 105% crit rate, take the attack you don't need more crit rate I, anyways that's the reason he's in that uh so we're going to jump into some content and watch him go things to remember um especially like in arena he has some issues right this will slow him down if he's up against the wrong affinity it's fine against neutral but when you start getting into high end arena he's really not going to be your guy but we're going to have some fun in gold five like lower gold five because he's absolutely amazing in that area where people don't have five, 600 resist. And again, if we were to, I mean, maybe we should just roll this up because we could give him some more accuracy and then he will get a 50% increase on top of that. Plus we just got, we need to, <laughs> this guy needs some glyphs. <laughs> he would just got more attack. 
Uh, so now now we're even higher on accuracy. He'll give himself 50 percent of this on top of it, getting us well over 300. So let's jump into some stuff. One thing I was having fun with him. Uh, I've been doing my Sylvan Watchers, trying to get their masteries up. Now he's done, but these two are not. So I'm still running it. Now let's watch what the AI does. The AI is kind of stupid. We're going to slow it down as it comes around to him. It likes to use the AOE hit and then increases accuracy and attack. Come on. Player, in what, what, in what planet is that the order you want this to go? You want to increase attack then you and increase your accuracy, then land the debuff, right? So that's all silly. I don't know why they made it this way. So now let's do the same thing, but let's tell him, let's tell him to do the, do the right thing here, right? We want, we want to buff ourselves. AOE, decrease defense, go into an A1 and get back to buffing ourselves. So that's all the only difference we're going to make. I mean, he, he's he been doing fine getting through it the other way. But this is going to clean things up. It's going to make more sense. We're going to do more damage on the A2, which comes with the A3. So there we go. Now we'll wipe the wave much easier. And now we're just hoping for... He's on the right side, the way I rebuilt it. We're just hoping to barrel into these extra turns. Look at him go. Look at me. Just, the waves don't stand a chance. And of course... It won't always prop perfectly, right? Like against the boss, we'll get to see it do well and not do well. But I have seen him lock this boss up like no one gets a turn. <laughs> so hopefully now we're buffing. We're decreasing defense. It's all about the A1. That's why the Relentless set is really fun to have. It's easier to proc that A1 because if you don't proc it, you can still proc it with it. And look at him go. It's just fully automatic. He doesn't want to stop. So, you know, if he misses decreased defense, it slows him down. That's about it, right? If you don't proc the A1, he has to come back around to his turn, but super fun to watch, right? So let's try diving into Arena, and uh, we'll talk about the good and the bad. Okay, so his weakness here is Spirit Affinity, right? Uh, or anybody that puts up block debuffs. So we're going to be going as a Ghost second team, and if we've got Necret in there or a Siffy, we're going to have issues. If we're going up against like a Duchess, being the wrong affinity, we're not going to land that debuff going through our all of our abilities. And then our damage dealer is not going to be getting strong hits against her. So it, the affinity matchup is a little worse for him than other heroes because it shuts him down. But if we find somebody without a spirit affinity, uh, well, this I don't want to take on him. Here we go. This is a good one. They don't have block debuffs. They don't have. Uh, so he's, he's going to be he's set up to do what we want him to do. Buff first, then attack and debuff. This team probably will not be able to outresist him, and nobody's the wrong affinity. So we're going to put it on times one, at least when we get around to him. Let's set up our protections, let them take their hits. Oh, oh, they're getting us, they're getting us stunned. So we should be coming around to him, and he, he still should have the ability to use his A2 and land all of them if he does. He'd just start cycling like a madman, right? <laughs> Go fully automatic on these guys. So we just got to keep taking our beating. We're way slower than them. All right. One of these days, one of these days, we're going to get our turn. Come on. All right, here we go. He's going to try to buff himself. He can't get those buffs. But you see he does good damage, and then he gets his... Auto repeat, right? He's just going to keep going. So uh, without slowing it down, maybe we'll try a couple teams and show, you know, how he has weaknesses against some of these heroes. Like any of these with spirit affinity are going to be an issue for him. Not that I think we're going to lose the fight, but they're going to slow him down. Let's speed this up. He's over here on the right. We need him to land all debuffs to keep going through those abilities. Now we do have relentless set, which gives us the cushion. We did miss on Lugan, of course, wrong wrong affinity, and it shut him down for a minute. So we just got to get back around to him. We'll throw him on a speed team, and it's going to be a lot easier to get into these fights. But he clearly can do the damage, and if there is no issue up on the board, what he can do is just ridiculous. All right, so we're going to jump in on the Eternal Dragon, and I'm going to do floor 80. Uh, he just really... It's too slow. He's just too slow for floor 90. Uh, we got, got to roll him up a little more. But we're going to throw him in on a team. Uh, I usually use Ninja as my big damage dealer. Let's take him. Let me set this up. All right, so let's let's take him in. We, we really we only have one cleanse. We might want 
somebody else who can cleanse, maybe Mithrala or, or Mith most people have Mithrala, so we'll take her. We'll take the speed aura. So let me get through these waves so that we start with everything off uh, cooldown and kind of watch how he takes care of a boss like Irigoth. He's able to take care of the waves when he calls up the ads as well as do great damage, our main damage dealer against the boss. All right, so now that we're on the boss, basically we're just going to set up our team like we normally would, and he's just going to be our damage dealer, right? So I'm bringing counterattacks. Whoever you got is great on Irigoth, the Eternal Dragon. But when we get to him, we're going to try to be rotating through these abilities. So first we're going to set up by doing damage to the dragon. We want to debuff the dragon. He's void, so that's just fine. Get back to our A1. And we didn't get lucky, the lucky proc there, but this is where we want the procs. We want to kill these adds, and we want to kill them quickly. This is where he's going to actually shine. So let's make sure everybody's cleansed. We're good. You kind of want to kill this blue ad, right? So we can reset his abilities, make sure that he's ready to go. Uh, I think he already was, but either way, now we know he is. And once we kill this, it resets abilities anyway. Hopefully we can cleanse this fear. And now he's just going to take off, so... He buffs himself, break defense on everybody, and then starts taking out ads. Extra turn, take out ad. Extra turn, <laughs> he can buff himself again. This should kill all the ads. Debuff the boss. And now, we, I mean, honestly, we can just hit auto, and this is going to work out just fine now. So you can see where he really comes in pretty... He's fun to watch, if nothing else, right? Uh, there are a lot of in-game heroes that might be better, but because he is the only option to decrease defense in his faction, you're going to want to build him anyway, so you might as well see the fun you can have with him. Alright, so let's fast forward to the end of this. Easy peasy, tons of damage out of, uh, is it Dithy? We're going to call him, yeah, Mist Rider D. Definitely, definitely solid, you know, so he's he's usable everywhere else because you're going to want to build him regardless for his faction. So let's do the last thing. The most, if you want to see the damage he can output, the best way to do it is put him on a sustained fight. Uh, let me see if I can fit him into some kind of clan boss team and we'll just see how much damage he racks up. So now we're going to give him like sustained fight type masteries, right? Something to go up against something like Clan Boss where he's going to be on the team for a while. Uh, I've got a team set up. We will give it a shot. So we are the wrong affinity. <laughs> like Spirit, not the way to show him off is keeping defense down and taking tons of extra turns. So let's just hop in. We'll do Nightmare. He should be fine. And I made up a little team. It's not a tuned team, and it's not unkillable. It's a bunch of protection with him. But we are telling him to prioritize his, his skills in order. Basically, what we're going to get is a lot of extra hits. Uh, we're going to get... Now, we got Helm Smasher off, so let's see how the hits actually look. He's right here, second from the left. Once we get decreased defense out, he buffs himself, decreases defense, and now he's hitting for still 100 and. 30, a pretty good hit. Plus, we're proccing Warmaster procs. Uh, this team won't last very long. I really doubt it. It's going to have a lot of protection, but once we get to like round 20, it's going to go down pretty quick. He is in a very weak build. Let's, let's just watch him for a minute. Watch him getting his extra turns, <laughs> keeping that defense down, still going with the extra turns. We have counterattack masteries now. You can't proc extra turns off counterattacks, but it's more hits from him, right? So we're just going to let this run. I'll come in at 10 rounds. We'll see how he's doing. Cycling through those abilities just like a madman. We're guaranteed every time he comes around to get at least three of his turns, two of them doing damage. So it's kind of impressive. All right, we'll be back at around turn 10. Let's just watch it for a minute.
Okay, I I kind of suspect this team will fall apart here after round 20 pretty quickly. And we'll end it after he dies because he'll be the first to go, right? He's really weak build. Uh, he's just not made for a clan boss. But it's still, it may drag out another 10 rounds or so. When he dies, I'll cut back in. But the amount of turns this guy can get is unbelievable. I mean, look at him go right now. And it, sometimes him and Cardio just going back and forth on the extra turns. It's pretty insane. So again, when he, I'll cut back in when he dies. And we'll just compare his damage to Cardio, who is definitely in a clan boss build, does a lot of damage. Uh, you know, he's no ninja, but the amount of damage he's putting out is pretty insane. Okay, so he finally did. He, he ate it that time. Let me make sure because we're still on counterattacks here. Okay, so we're just going to end it here. That way, what are we? We made it to like round 37. Uh, we can compare him to Cardio on damage, which is uh, definitely a good comparison. <clears throat> Cardio's getting tons of extra turns. It does huge damage, and he did. He actually outperformed him. So, you know, no poisons on this team, no weaken on this team. And he still pulled off 16 million damage in 37 rounds, I think, or whatever, however many. <laughs> Look, you know, Miss Rider D, he's not bad at all. So I imagine, especially on normal, uh, maybe hard, you could get a lot of damage out of him on the Hydras as well. But because of the mixture of affinities, he's not going to continuously get those extra turns. He'll get stopped every now and then. He's a pretty amazing champ. Uh, he's he's one of the funner ones to play. There's no question about that. And because if you look in the Sylvan Watchers, he's it. Th this guy has a single target, decreased defense, and then he does the same thing, increases his own accuracy and crit damage to get one extra turn. And, you know, that's it. That That's the only other decreased defense we've got here. So an AOE decreased defense is going to be huge whether the affinity lines up or not when it comes to faction wars. So if you got him, there's already a reason to build him, you know, as far as do you need him immediately? I don't know. I mean, come on, Stagnite, Duke the Pierce, so many, uh, what is it, Siege Hulk? Amazing champions that can decrease defense and do good damage like Mist Rider. Probably not going to outperform him on damage because of the extra turns, right? That's what's so cool about extra turns. The, the amount of damage he does is just compounded by adding all these extra hits. So anywhere where there's extra adds, he's going to do good. That's pretty much all there is to it. He doesn't have to have a relentless set, but it gives you that cushion for missing one decreased defense or the A1 not proccing. But you could clearly put him in a stronger build, get out there, uh, take him into arena. Arena has its issues. I mean, I'm not saying he's a top tier arena champion, but he fits in almost anywhere. Super fun if you got him. There's a reason to build him right out of the gate, so I wanted to show what he can do. He's absolutely, he's a joy to watch. So if you got him, congrats. And until next time, enjoy the grind.